Hi, I'm Bethany Fong, Design Lead for Material Design. Hi, I'm Christian Robertson, Creative Lead for Material Design. We're excited to offer the first in-depth preview of where we're going with material design and share our thinking on how design systems can evolve and what that means for designers and developers. First, let's take a look at our foundational thinking. We introduced material design in 2014 as a system for building bold, beautiful, and consistent digital experiences. It became the design foundation for our Google products. Designers and developers around the world, like you, have extended the system to work for your brand as well, launching in millions of apps. But design systems can never stay static, nor should they. So we continued to evolve the system, and in 2018, we launched Theming, a major update to Material that delivered a more unified and adaptable design system. Theming expanded the expressive range for a brand's identity by supporting custom color, type, and shape. We took the same components that we used to build our own apps here at Google and made them available as open source libraries. And even though we missed you all without IO last year, we've kept busy. We've continued to update material design with dark theme, motion systems, tools, and more. This year, we're excited to share some of the latest material updates with Android 12. As you saw in the keynote, Android's new UI looks strikingly different. People are craving more custom experiences. When we think about user needs from Mountain View to Mumbai and London to Lagos, it's clear that a strictly modernist approach to utility and design, or the idea that one size fits all, needs rethinking or even revolutionizing. While smartphone features and functions continue to grow, the one size fits all approach feels impersonal. It takes time and effort to unbox a phone and make it yours. Time to rework the settings to fit you. Instead, personal devices should feel personal. With Android 12, we're working to make devices feel as individual as the people who use them. We set out to evolve material design to empower individual identities by enabling product expressions that are as richly varied as human behaviors, needs, and desires. We're designing a future in which devices support, not suppress individuality. When we think about the metaphors and paradigms that guided our past design systems, we built on ideas from science fiction, a techno-futuristic utopia blended with ideals of modernist design. Grids, hierarchy, and consistency are all hallmarks of material's early years. The symbols and metaphors central to material reflect work culture and commodities. We leaned in on skeuomorphism, folders, trash cans, and yes, paper. It was effective and relatable, but as our relationship to devices and screens becomes more fluid and personal, we see a need for a more expansive design language, one that works across boundaries like work and leisure. We asked, how can material design enable people to move through their lives in a way that honors both the personal and professional, the public and private? We're taking the Google scale ambition of building for all users and making it work in an individual human scale too. Our goal for a universally beautiful and helpful design system requires some confrontation with the knowledge that beauty and utility are highly personal. In essence, how do you evolve a standard language to work for a non-standard world? To get there, we identified three guiding principles, starting with the idea of comfortable. We asked, how can a design system make a person feel at home with their device? The past year challenged us in so many new ways. Our need to stay connected and feel at ease with our technology is stronger than ever. So we set out to create experiences that resonate with people and their individual definitions of comfort. Secondly, and in friendly tension with comfortable is iconoclastic. How can software exhibit the awareness to adapt and thrive through change? We saw a need to challenge familiar assumptions and conventions. It's an opportunity to anticipate and design for emerging ecosystems, blurring the boundaries between hardware, operating systems, and apps. Finally, they're spirited. We wanted to imbue digital development with the spirit of the natural world. Organic forms that react to input are an example of how surface effects can enliven our everyday interactions, adding new energy and optimism. We're introducing this sense of aliveness, particularly through shape, space, light, and motion. This is the direction we're pursuing with material design beginning with Android 12. We want people to be able to co-create their visual experience, design their world to find comfort in that space. Dynamic color makes this possible. 
It's a new feature that derives individualized color palettes from a person's wallpaper photo. Your photo is the starting point for more visual tuning as well, from high contrast to more neutral variations of a color extraction pattern. Here's a closer look at how an image can set the mood for the system. The system picks colors from a person's wallpaper image and translates a hue into tonal ranges. A range of light and dark tones is generated from the extracted color. This allows the same palette to work across light, dark, and high contrast themes and with the same color slots. Under the hood, there are features to the color system that support the need for all users to feel comfortable and reflected in their device. With the possibilities for color now vastly greater, we had to find a way for any color combination to also have accessible contrast. We needed to ensure that all potential color pairings work even without testing each one. To manage for the uncertainty that dynamic color introduces, we use established relationships between colors based on luminosity or light level. By calculating luminance rather than hue, we can define which tones combine successfully. And what I mean by successful is, we eliminated the possibility of two low luminance colors being paired since that contrast would be insufficient. This way, inclusion and accessibility are our default standard for anyone using the libraries. As a result, the color system is spread across the entire UI. Part of honoring the individual means making it possible for a person to change colors easily anytime. In the course of a day, a person might jump from a bright visual experience to a dark theme later on. Comfort is realized through more than just color. Our Google apps are beginning to use Google Sand text. It's an addition to the Google Sans family familiar from Google's marketing materials. A new optical size is designed for smaller point sizes and perfectly suited for body text. And we're using variable font technology, making it possible for a range of adjustments or variations to be consolidated into a single file. Variable font technology also demonstrates another guiding principle, iconoclastic. We're building a design system with the capability to break form and adapt to meet the needs of the moment. The flexible attitude can be felt whether adapting to a specific moment, like an alarm clock ring, or adapting to a different screen altogether. We have a whole session dedicated to adaptive design and considerations for large screens. For lots more detail, watch this session, five things you can do right now to prepare your app for large screens. And also consider checking out Build Beautiful Material Design Apps with Jetpack and Pose. Speaking of change, instead of relying heavily on shadow, instead we're using color and other methods to separate objects in the foreground and background. Also, shape allows us new ways to look at containment and state. Finally, we're bringing the principle of spirited to routine interactions. New surface effects, like a subtly emanating shimmer, can bring life to familiar feedback cues to interaction states. So for example, when a phone is connected to a charger, a shimmer leads the confirmation that it's charging. With surface effects, we want to show more than simple overlays and fades. Here you can see how on the right, a luma mat makes the image entrance more satisfying than a simple fade. It's a subtle but palpable change. Flexible shapes are starting point for smooth adaptation of layout and new ways to show surfaces interacting without stacking. And shapes can stretch in response to input, communicating the limits of a scroll region. Motion is so much more than screen-to-screen -screen transitions. By animating the details, screens come alive with a spirit that mirrors but doesn't copy organic movement. As you've seen, there's a lot in store for material in Android 12. From dynamic color to adaptive components, we're evolving the design language to create a more human, comfortable, spirited device ecosystem for everyone. And as we introduce these changes, we also know they won't be the last since system design is never finished. It involves continual creation and we're excited for future co-creating with you. In the months ahead, we're looking forward to taking you along for the ride. We're planning an AMA and we'll keep posting about the new direction on Material Blog and in the newsletter. You can also find us on our YouTube channel and Twitter. Finally, don't forget to check out our other talks. Thanks for watching. Thank you.